Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> Espiritu here. So this is going to be another live chat, episode 7. And um, for, I'm also going to make this uh, uh, like a podcast version as well. So I did a small introduction. If you don't know me, I'm Espiritu. I'm the copyright teacher here in the Netherlands. And recently I... Uh, started a little project uh, having live chats on Instagram with uh, several capoeiristas, experienced capoeiristas, and talk about capoeira, uh, papoeira. But uh, at first I called it papoeira, but uh, I uh, I call it call it now the capoeira talk, especially for the podcast uh, thingy. Um, so yeah, I'm trying new uh, trying a new thing. I'm trying um, a new mic thingy. So I hope the audio is okay. I don't know if it makes any difference. Uh, I already see uh, my guest is all, already online. I will invite you in a minute, Maskochi. <laughs> um, so I hope my, I hope you can uh, hear me for those who are in the live chat. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of, this is episode seven. And uh, to be honest, uh, I really, I really love doing this. Because I learned so much from all the stories. I, the first episode was met with Master in Muito Tempo. It was really fun. And I still had to figure out my way of communicating and find a way to do a live, live chat. Because life is different than uh, pre-recorded stuff, of course. Life, you can mess thing up, things up. Um, then I had with Master Ponchonier. was really, really fun, really fun to do. Mike Pinto from Singer for, uh, for Survival, uh, with Mestre Caravetu from Texas, and then Mestre Mia Velia was really insightful stuff. And then I did an episode uh, just by my own, uh, The Road 2, so you can check out the podcast about that, The Road 2. And uh, now it's episode 7, with none other than Contra Mestre Mascochi. So, without further ado, Let's invite him. Uh, let me see. Let's invite Ms. Mascochi. Come on, people, come in the chat. There he is, man. Hello. Hello, man. How are you doing? I'm nice to fine. see you. Likewise, likewise. Yeah. Finally. Finally, we meet each other, but virtually then. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll meet each other again. I, I'm pretty sure we met. You may not remember. I remember seeing you in Holland. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if it was 2006, 2007. Yeah. I don't remember. I think 2006. Six. Yeah. 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 Long time ago. Yeah. I want... <laughs> it's a long time, man. A really long time. <laughs> yeah. I. Still had hair back then, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome, man. Thank welcome you. To the, Thank you. To the Thank live chats. Thank you for uh, for doing this with me. And uh, like I said, I'm really learning from all those kind of stories. And like I said in my previous uh, chats, I'm a little bit in a in a different path in my life and different phase in my life now. Uh, also in Capoeira, I wanted to gain more knowledge, and and, and I love listening to stories. I love telling stories and I was like let's talk with capoeiristas let's talk about their uh, perspective their upbringing in capoeira and just let's connect with, with people you know and um, so yes that's why I'm as asking so ma as many uh, as, uh, as possible and um, I get so much energy out of this you know because I always listen to I listen back and I always hate myself <laughs> I always say, but I have to learn, you know, to how to communicate. And uh, but I learn from all the stories, and it's so beautiful, so fun. And after the after the chats, I I'm so bursting with energy. You know, I wanted to play capoeira, or I want to string the beating bow and play the beating bow, whatever. Um, I really love it. So again, thank you for uh, doing this, man. It's an absolute pleasure. I, I jump at the opportunity to do this as well because. Everything you said really resonates with me. Uh, all of all of us capoeiristas, but obviously everybody has had to redefine things online. Like yeah. During the 
pandemic after the pandemic um and <laughs> i always say this a lot and it's you know at risk saying the the good side of the pandemic was yeah <laughs> <laughs> which is not a popular thing to say but I'm an eternal optimist I think you know when we're forced to deal with something like that uh, especially the capoeira community it was amazing I mean I uh, think most capoeiristas in the first lockdown that we had here in Europe were in their best shape in capoeira yes, wise, yes. Because there was no like middle ground there was no like getting on a train traveling to another city True. organizing immediately you people are running more classes than they normally would because they don't have any risk yeah uh, we're just training crazy one of the best things for me was connecting you know a, across the world especially with people in brazil yeah. we did a whole lot of classes and lives you know with all sorts of people all across the world highlight for me was you know a uh, message on grange master cordio master sooner you know we did a couple of our own online events so cool. we just placed our normal annual events for online versions yeah and and you know it's it's really post, I mean, before that we 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 tried a lot more to change the paradigm a little bit but it, it, and do a paradigm shift but the, the thing is that happened like you just mentioned is sometimes we never have time for this true when we do a wear event right true. shake shake hands do a cartwheel kick each other in yes. the face shake hands again leave <laughs> later <laughs> And, and, you know, the capoeira is amazing. There's so many parts to it. But some of the best bits of my capoeira life have not been physical. And in terms of they've not been in the hard there. They've been afterwards. Mm -hmm. Or they've been, like, talking about yeah. it afterwards. Yeah. It, it, you know, uh, more, more of a kind of uh, convivial experience. You know, like they use the term vivenza a lot there. Yes, yes. And obviously this is a great thing what you're doing because there's such a lot more now out there than there mm -hmm. was before the pandemic but a lot of it in portuguese so True. it's really nice to have more stuff not just the live because obviously not everybody is on instagram no right? no no not everybody organizes their life around instagram either to be available to watch it but the True. fact that you're recording it and making it available is amazing yeah it's a really important resource so thank you for doing that. It's an amazing project thank you man thank you yeah so yeah because first of all i was just focusing on the instagram parts but i came to realize not everyone's on instagram of course yeah. my, not all my students uh, use instagram so let's let's make it more available for abroad so i posted also videos uh, on youtube and i will share it but then i was like hmm maybe I can make it like a, a podcast thing you know convert the audio uh, uh, put it on, on spotify or apple podcast whatever and uh, yes, here we are, man. So <laughs> well, it's great. It's great. It's absolutely great. Because another thing is that's why it's good is it reminds us as well not to focus on the physical True. because we all talk about that a lot. I think teachers generally say this a lot. Oh, it's not just physical. It's not just physical. Mm -hmm. But actually, having places where capoeira can exist that aren't physical yeah. is really, really important. Yeah. You know? And that's a lot more with the musical side of capoeira recently. But it's nice that there's lots of these happening to help because for a lot of people for us for example a lot of this is just normal we talk about capoeira all the time yeah, yeah. it's our day to day but for students it's important for them to have a doorway into that because mm -hmm. they might not feel comfortable sat at a table full of or well, they might have an opportunity to sit at a table with a bunch True. of professionals True. you know and if they're all brazilian and speak portuguese then <laughs> it's not going to help either you know so. yeah yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's really true because I had that as well way back. You know, I was really in awe of all the teachers sitting there on, in the, on, at the table and speaking Portuguese. I couldn't speak Portuguese. I could understand tits bits, but I was like, okay, I, I am, who am I to mangle in their conversation? I, but I really wanted to ask one of the masters something, but I was really, yeah, kind of scared, yeah. you know, kind of, uh, yeah, it's like how I'm gonna approach them, you know. And so that's. Do you know what? You're a big inspiration. I have so many like weird memories in my head because we're talking 2006, right? Yeah. I remember that event being full of like 50 odd teachers, Brazilian yeah. teachers. Yeah. It was a real kind of pivotal, pivotal moment in the capoeira community where everybody got together. It's one of the biggest events. Yes. I just remember you coming from nowhere. 
and we just wanted to know who you were, where you came <laughs> from, then finding out you were Brazilian and then finding out, like you said, don't speak Portuguese. And for me, as another non-Brazilian, it was so inspirational, not just what you did in that event as, a, as your capoeira and how you played in the harder, but the reaction it got as well, because, you know, we all want to be inspired by everybody, but obviously, once you start to see somebody you can connect more with because you, you it's a natural association for us to go ah, he's not brazilian i'm not brazilian oh, yeah dude. yeah and then you were very inspirational because you got a hell of a lot of respect from that which you deserve you know thank you uh, thank for you, the way you played and your energy and it really was one of those moments that reminds me ah, it's all about enthusiasm it's all about what you have to contribute it doesn't matter about anything else true and ultimately you can get hung up in many other different things but if you yeah. what you do is good and what you do is enjoyable that's it that that trumps everything yeah that's what i i'm still trying to do if i go to events or play capoeira i want to give my all and in the in the beginning a couple of years ago i was really focusing on i'm not a brazilian uh do i sing well do i pronounce the words correctly um where's my where's my place in the community even in the bateria, can I play? Am I allowed to play in the bateria as non-Brazilian? All this kind of stuff. But people kept asking me, just come come to the event, just do your thing, you know? And even my master now, he says, Speed, come on, man, do your thing. Be you. Absolutely. Don't worry about other people thinking those kind of things. No, just do you. And try, try to bring your energy. And, you know, right now, I'm like I said, I'm in different path right now also physically because i have a little bit of uh of uh uh I, my my hips are not working mm. fine anymore mm. uh, i've i've uh, a severe arthritis and so i have to uh see my way in the in, in the in the hall that's certain movements i cannot do anymore and it, it, it take it takes a toll but it also takes a toll here you know how to, how are you going to cope with that yeah sometimes you get Sometimes you, I get a little bit bummed because sometimes in my mind, I'm still stuck in the past, like I, how I played, you know, and, and sometimes you, you get a bit insecure. Absolutely. And, and then like, shit, man, I want to play like yeah. that again, or I'm not that fast anymore. Yeah. Uh, or people, oh, uh, this is only in, when I'm low in my energy, when I'm in my little bit in the dark space. So yeah. I'm thinking, well, um, I'm not as fast anymore like I used to. People only want to, to see that spirit too, but a lot of people say, we are not here for the crazy flips or the fast kicks. We're here for, we asking you for, because of you, Absolutely. your energy. And I'm trying to, you know, um, maintain that, you know, to, to keep it fresh. Okay, let's do me and in a different kind of way, you know, put more effort into music, put more effort, how to channel your energy towards the harder. Mm -hmm those kind of stuff you know i've my crazy stuff i've done it you know so right now i'm not like doing this it gives me energy talk about capoeira learning yeah. um I'll absolutely adapt. absolutely I, I agree a hundred percent and the thing is nobody wants injury right it's not no a, it's not a desire um it ties really well in something i, I wanted to talk about if, if if we can if this it seems to be going in that direction which is really good um, so my memories of you as being physically amazing, by the way. And so I, I obviously, you know, everybody varies in physical ability. And I can imagine for yourself, we, there was a, there's a, there's a uh, female capoeirista who's just won some competitions in Brazil. She's called Navaila. She's just injured her knee. And she's very famous for being a good capoeira player. Yeah. yeah? And I think in your case, if, you know, if I'm okay to speak on your behalf, you're renowned for being very good in the HOD. Yeah. And so I think what's difficult for people like yourself who have that, and all of us, if we have that moment, it's good, is then that becomes our thing, like you mentioned. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think what's nice about capoeira is the, the longer you do it and you realize other people's things rather than just yours, you realize that there's lots of people who are never going to be able to do a somersault, never going to have physical abilities mm -hmm. that we have, that other people have. True. Um, and so then capoeira, the lens, so the lens becomes wider. We widen yeah. the lens. And this is something I really, really w would like to talk about because we've had a really tough few years for everybody, yeah. you know, and, and injury is tough for everybody, every athlete. Mm -hmm. 
but the pandemic was nobody expected that. No, it's the biggest has that anybody got. It's a big injury yeah. to people's enthusiasms. Capoeira groups fading all yeah. over the planet, uh, and not just capoeira. You know, people are losing their lives. I mean, there's you can't put it into words how in you know how much of a social injury that was to our society, right? So what I feel is the new thing that's happening is that people are starting to do this. They're starting to focus on other things yeah. because they realize it's not sustainable. I mean, sustainability is a big thing now, but let's talk more about Capoeira. I think what, one of the things that I hope changes the most is this idea of competition. Yeah. Mm. So when we widen the lens a little bit and we don't think about, oh, am I the best Capoeira player or even competing with yourself to be the best, which is a very Western yeah sort yeah. of athletic yeah yeah olympic approach yeah. right it's about which is not sustainable no. olympic athletes are not sustainable and they have finite careers so i really like a guy called simon cynic who's got a few books quite uh, you know quite a few podcasts on some ted talks one of his most recent ones is about the difference between is about game theory the difference between finite and infinite games mm -hmm. so if we think of kappa as being a finite game then we have to have a winner and a loser. Exactly. Have to have, and there's only the game ends yeah. with a winner or a loser. Yeah. When we think of it as an infinite, forever, long-term thing. Mm -hmm. Then just everything you said makes sense. Once you widen the lens and you look at it in the bigger context, then it doesn't matter if you're injured because there's so many other things involved, and it actually just forces you to stop doing the physical training and focusing on all this other stuff. And true, you know, yeah. one of the things we are trying to do consistently and it's very difficult is to try and keep that lens wide keep the, the the limelight shed equally through all aspects and celebrate different things because the time of celebrating amazing companies in the we shouldn't stop celebrating amazing no 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 but there was a time i think I can speak fairly that event was particularly the time in Capoeira in Europe where it was who's the best in the hot yes so every, the whole yes. event was about when's the hot yeah. gonna happen who's gonna be the best in that hot <laughs> and I was the same I was like man after the workshop where, where, where's the hot where's the hot because I want to play the audio you know <laughs> I want to prove myself I want to prove myself but exactly right now it's like I'm chilling man <laughs> I'm chilling <laughs> absolutely I, and you know, I, I watched a couple of your, your podcasts, but Mia me, me, Mesta Mia Vela was here recently. Oh, cool. I, I watched cool. recently. My sponsor Nia, I watched as well. I, but my sponsor Nia, I've had, got a long term like history because he's yeah. very cool to us. But what I love about uh, Mesta Mia Vela when she was here, we talked a lot about this, is the sharing of space, right? Yeah. Kapoor is a yeah. public space. Yeah. Uh, and particularly when you're talking about gender or identity, but also very importantly i think it's important what not just how we share space but what we celebrate in the middle of that space yes so exactly the same point if you're only sh like it, we know how much it varies each harder varies a lot there can be some harders where you've got three seconds to show something yeah <laughs> yep. people are celebrating yeah. that three seconds that you've got to make an impact yeah. on that my society and then you've got other ones where you've got five six minutes to do stuff and everybody sat there watching. And so, you know, there's two ends of each spectrum in how Capoeira manifests, but I think it's really important. We need to try and allow the people who need more time to have more time, the people who are enthusiastic to be enthusiastic, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, and it's very hard to do those things because <laughs> they're polar opposites. And I think that's the challenge we have now in Capoeira. It's not competition. And when I talk about competition, I mean competition between each other. I know there's been some big competitions now, and I think they're great in terms of limelight mm -hmm. and promoting mm -hmm. the art form. But there's, I think for me, there's a big difference between Capoeira competitions yeah. and competitions within Capoeira. Ah, yes. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. But I think it's one thing having a capoeira competition, yeah, and, and training to be to be competitive for that, yeah. and having a competitive capoeira attitude, i.e., trying to win or trying mm. to prove that you're better yeah. than someone else. You've only one goal, one purpose, you know. And I think it comes down to like when capoeira was really young in Europe, at least because obviously that's what I can talk about most of all. But mm -hmm. we hear about what it was like in the early days in Brazil the scarcity of access meant there wasn't competition because everybody worked together. And it's the same historically when you've got societies who are really struggling, they work together. Yeah. They've got a problem to sort out. 
like the pandemic, for yeah. example. But then we get this mid ground of like semi affluent. Yeah. Everybody's competing over that tiny exactly. Group, yeah, that, it's one, that one thing. Phone that everybody's yeah. trying to get. And they say in Portuguese, farinha pouco, meu pirão primeiro. So it's like yeah. it fish stew, you want to thicken yes. stew. There's not enough flour for everyone. Okay, I'll go first then. I'll go first, yeah. But then I'll take it, I'll take it yeah. all. Yeah. So the irony is when you've got hardly anything, everybody works together. When there's enough affluence, people start to compete. But actually, if we can get capoeira, again, wider lens, beyond the need for competition, where everybody's got lots of students, everybody's got a yeah. space. And we don't need to compete. That's when I think, so we're stuck in this kind of, it's enough, we've got enough going on. And then lots of people are competing to travel around every single Capoeira event. And True. Like you said, be themselves and sell themselves and, you know, capitalize on the small micro society that we have yeah. rather than growing Capoeira. Like, I think for me, more and more, like the more and more hair I lose, <laughs> <laughs> the more I stop like valuing capoeiristas who are good at capoeira yes more i value capoeiristas who are good for capoeira, for capoeira. there's a big difference there yeah. big difference there yeah well spoken it, but it's true it's true and you always see it with experience you know that's the thing that's the thing and if you go if you if you travel to every event every capoeira of uh every country you you will experience a lot of things uh in the community of capoeira whether you like it uh, good things or bad things but even the bad things you have to you have to have that because then you know in the future okay that's not a path that i want to walk you know and uh it's all about life experience as well so you really yeah that is, it's true what you said you know it's, it's really true yeah and i think i'm glad you agree i'm glad you agree and i think once you start to do that a little bit Every, all the other things line up like dominoes. Yeah. Like once you yeah. widen your lens and you think of capoeira first, it takes the pressure off you because yeah. you don't yes. have to be capoeira. Like one of the the things I've always tried to do when I teach, and me and Joyce, my my wife, we work together. Yeah. Already, already, there's two of us, right? So the pressure's off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> already twice as good, twice yeah. as as bureaucratic, and twice as good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then it doesn't, it, you don't, you, you know, this ownership thing, like be, taking ownership of what you're doing is different than owning something and saying, oh, I have to be this, you know, mm -hmm. I am represent, I am the physical embodiment, I'm Eddie Gordo, <laughs> keep pressing circle, I do all the cool exactly. moves, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be that no. if what you're doing, if you're just a doorway, you know, you're not, you're not trying to be capoeira, you're just trying to facilitate it, right? Yes. Once you start to do that, there's so many things that, help a couple like i use the hard as an example a lot of students for example when we're playing all the instruments and the students are in the circle and they lose enthusiasm for singing yes yeah, classic mm -hmm. i said well guys you have to understand this is not a spectator sport it's not a band no. an audience no. i was saying if you guys are tired of clapping come and play the billing bow then it's much really? more difficult to do really, yeah. so you have you have we have shared responsibilities that it's important to lose the hype lose the kind of like excitement that that is just about that one small thing which is the game of capoeira mm -hmm. or even like fast-paced capoeira as well like that's obviously really good we always finish amazingly fast yeah. here as well. it's it's important once we get students to realize that it's absolutely okay to 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 just be there and yeah. just be giving and actually that makes a big difference turning up clapping your hands singing exactly singing other people yeah, because other people might be having a great day you might not be you know yeah. but you're there for all i agree yes because i always say to my students as well it's like if you if we're making a harder we're all contributing for one thing it's not like okay i'm the only one to have to, to lead the harder you know no grab the beating bow sing even when you're playing capoeira in the harder you are allowed to sing, try to sing. Also good for your breathing as well, but sing. Uh, like you said, uh, if you're tired with clapping, grab an instrument, grab a heckle, heckle, I will go, pandero, whatever, but try to try to contribute in, into capoeira harder, do, just do something. Because I'd rather have someone in, maybe not even know the songs, but really enthusiastic clapping and exactly. you know swinging. I'd rather have that than people like, doing that oh, i hate that you know it's like come on exactly know? it's like having the perfect recipe 
but not getting in the kitchen. It's <laughs> exactly like that. It's like, it doesn't matter if you've read all the books and you know all the stuff, if you're not contributing. And there can be a guy there who's just great at chips. Yeah. And you know what? They're good chips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone loves chips. So why yep. are you taking chips, man? Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 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 And, and the other thing I was going to say is one thing that, they, so all this has been a long process, right? You know, it's been a long process to get to this thought process now, even just to be articulated is a privilege. So thank you. But post pandemic, all this stuff happening, you that it then starts to affect even the content, because once you start to think about that and you start thinking, because as a teacher, it's a public space. We have to sometimes have several cups of coffee, psych ourselves up, go, right, I'm going to teach and then nobody turns up to class. <laughs> and then the day that we're absolutely knackered, we didn't have time for coffee, we just want to go home and cry on the sofa. The people, and we've got nothing planned, and we have yeah. to make, you know. So one of the things that's helped a lot is once you widen your lens, you just think, I don't have to make anything new today. What I did last week, they can do again. Yeah. That's yeah. absolutely fine. Yeah. Because it takes people time to mm -hmm. need repetition. Exactly. You know, Need to go over stuff just or oh, see 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 no 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 really well done it takes years of practice yeah and there's so nuances to it and i think that's another thing that's that's been really useful for me is like i've been i i remember back in that time that time that i'm gonna talk about again yeah yeah you know it, it was meaningful for me i was i was i can't remember it's been like 16 17 maybe 18 at that time i can't remember but very young super enthusiastic absolutely over the top and then completely like intimidated out of all this amazing capoeira that was going on. And so there was a time where I think also all of those young Brazilian contramess and mess mm -hmm. that were in Europe, they were all desperate to make a name for yeah. themselves. There was, yeah. You know, to make a difference, to be different, to be, there was a healthy competition. Yeah. But then when you have that mind, when they had that mindset that, you know, it's, oh, I've got to do something different. Well, I've got to have this extra move or I've got to do an owl, a somersault and a handspin, or I've got to do how handsault, handspin, and then about you know, yeah. and it becomes like a continual competition. And then the classes were like that, so each class mm -hmm. would have more content than the last class. True, and yes. every single day they were trying to teach every single thing, and I think that enthusiasm was really good. It made I was very privileged to be around at that time. Yeah. But literally, like people were just super creative. However, for the learning process and for the construction of our mini society. We need more than creativity. Yeah. Like creativity is yeah. good. We need it, but we actually need some boring, mundane, hard grafting as well. Mm -hmm. We can't, they're two separate parts of the, the dichotomy, you know, yeah. but you need them both. It stagnates if you don't have creativity, but if you're just creating and creating and creating and you don't have a sieve to collect stuff, you know, there's amazing stuff that I can't remember what happens because again, it was so long ago. Nobody yeah. documented it. It was too much going on, and, and you will lose the, lose the essence as well of the you know of of what Capoeira is really about. Yes, creativity is good, but it's always good to go back to the basic, like you said, the the mundane yeah. uh, practice. But it's to me, it's not mundane. It's to me, it's more like okay. Let's go through it again. Like you said, it's, it takes years to, to perfect it. And yes, we, sometimes we are uh, influenced by other things that we see. Oh, let's, let's try this out. And you're going to the, with, with, with the current. But sometimes it's also good to step back a little bit and go back to the base. Uh, like last Thursday, uh, yesterday, I did a really simple class. Uh, I did a game with uh, just trying to grab the kashishi from, from each other. Mm -hmm. and the reflex thing, you know, make a little of a game. Um, just movements with marriage compasso, cabeçada, just mundane things, but we had fun. Absolutely. And we had fun. Mm -hmm. We had fun, you know? Yeah. yeah, totally. And that's the thing is making the, being creative with the stuff you need rather than trying to reinvent the wheel all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, that's exhausting. It's, it's really exhausting. exhausting. It's exhausting and it, 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 it's not good. It's not good for, it's not a long, t like again, again, it's not, in, you're focusing on the now a lot, which is really good. Yeah. I mean, in the hard we do, but again, outside the harder, we need to have some, you know, some sort of uh, narrative, some sort of direction. Where are we going? Yeah. Like, I'm going to go back to competition again. I feel like Capoeiristas 
if we were more competitive with other art forms mm -hmm. than with each other, you know, for example, uh, every time there's something that's parallels couple that comes around, yeah, we all jump on it. We want to jump on the bandwagon. Yes, uh, yeah. Movement culture or yeah. animal, yeah, you know, or breakdancing is getting really popular now. Oh, Red Bull's doing breakdancing and do this. You know, and I love all that. Oh, this musician's doing this. Oh, we're doing capoeira mixed with dance. We're doing capoeira mixed with MMA. We're doing capoeira this. And all of that's really good. Again, it's creative. Yeah. But what we're doing, and capoeira is so amazing that it can, it can occupy all the spaces. But us as people who live from capoeira and we're supposed to be like making this grow, mm -hmm. we focused on what we have rather than what they have. Again, yeah. I'm going to back to Simon Sinek, who used an, I, I, I really like him a lot. I think he's very capoeira in his thought process. He used the comparison, and I don't like to name drop companies, this is his quote, but he yeah. used the difference between Microsoft and mm. Apple, right? Mm. And he's saying that when Apple starts, Apple was nobody, and then they made all these like, you know, products got really popular, and then Microsoft kept trying to copy them <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. Copying them, trying to do the same stuff, yeah. not badly, and what, Apple at no point was trying to copy anybody. They no. were focused their own products and they had their own pathway and do it. This is back then. I'm not talking about nowadays, but when they started to like really progress. And I feel like that's what Capoeira needs to do now is we need to stop looking to the sidelines. Mm -hmm. We need to stop allowing our amazing artists to move out of Capoeira into other things and spend their time here. Cause yeah. if we, Heated with we're much like we're much better than anything else that's on the you know out there. I mean that's a fact. We've Agreed. got everything everything else has and Agreed. more. I mean you know it, I'm not demoting any of the art forms. I have huge respect for everybody and I love all the different art forms. But there is no other martial art with music. There is no other martial art with dance elements like capoeira. There's mm -hmm. no other you know history like capoeira. Every other martial art is is from the east and yeah. is military based. Um, you know, there's lots of other things from the, the African diaspora that are amazing and beautiful, but they don't have the same amount of global uh, uh, traction that capoeira has. True. And plus we've achieved so much ground to get to where we are, you know, and everybody like now you see lots of capoeira that's not capoeira that's yeah. just appropriated, which yeah. is cool. Too. But like, I feel like we need to be capitalizing on this and being, okay, now come back and find the source. And mm -hmm. we need to be organizing ourselves and working together, doing these sorts of talks, yeah. more people to professionalize and spend their lives in capoeira. And so I think we should be competing less with each other, more with, with yoga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it's also a little bit uh, the, um, the, the time where we're living it right now. We, yeah. Everything has to be fast and short. And, you know, I want to, I want to learn that movement yesterday ago, you know, it's, it's, people don't want to take the time. So what we're going to, so what we're doing, we, yeah, we're copying each other, but we're also competing to, uh, towards each other. But why you do you think you're, thing i do my thing and we can learn from each other we can exchange movements we can exchange knowledge or whatsoever i see no competition at all i i used to think like that but right now i'm like for why there's no competition Absolutely. you know the other thing I, I i like to use as a metaphor is uh, i don't know what it's like cause you're in holland yeah in the netherlands yeah. So I'm not sure. I've been to Netherlands a, a few times, but Cap Capoeira events, you see a sports hall, you don't see the country. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but in, I know in America, I know in the UK, we have a lot of department stores, yeah, like shopping malls. Yeah. yeah. So it's the idea of a shopping mall. Like if all of those shops were in direct competition with each other, they wouldn't all be under one roof. No. Yeah. But the point is, is people travel two hours from smaller cities to go there yeah. because it's a place where they can do shops. Uh, where they can do their shopping, right? It's the shopping center, the exactly. center. For and so exactly. it's, in, in the UK as well, we have a lot, we, we're very blessed to be very multicultural in the UK. Yeah. But in our city in Birmingham, we have huge communities, big Jamaican, cool. big uh, Indian community, big Arabic community. But there's some classic areas in our city where you literally will go to Lady Pool Road is one. There's another one, uh, you know, in the city center. And you go to this road and it's mm -hmm. back to back like Indian Pakistani shops. Oh, wow. Selling fresh fruits, you know, selling uh, halal food. Yeah. And you've got like, you've got like 200 meters where you've got 50 different shops all selling the same stuff. Yeah. 
And so then you think, well, how does that, like, if you've got a business mind or, again, a competitive thing, how does that work? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then, how's, how's it sustainable? <laughs> again, people travel from the whole city because yeah. it's like, well, I'm going to go there because then I can pick and choose. True. And I think that's, that's exactly what the point you just made is like, yeah. if, if, you know, I don't need to be spiritual. You're amazing. I'm never going to be you. No. I'm me. Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just be you. Amazing. And yeah. we're both going to be good in the hard then. We'll both be good together and we'll be good yeah. with other people. But we're not in competition. You know, no. people choose. If they like you, they like you. If they like me, they like me. If they don't like either of us, that's cool too, you know. And exactly. I think that's a really important mindset we need to be promoting, you know. Yeah. And among, amongst students too, because uh, parents are the worst case of this with kids, right? Yeah. Because they love their kids to be the number one kid and mm -hmm. if another kid takes a belt but their kid doesn't it's a big issue you know yep. and then adults are like that too with the belts and and the, and the hierarchies and status it's all about status at the end yeah. of the day. So as, as long as we, we keep uh, encouraging people's egos to center on status and affluation affluent you know mm -hmm. uh, positions within some fantasy hierarchy then yeah. that's what we look for whereas if we just say do you know what you're absolutely fine you're perfect the way you are we don't need anything else. However, let's use you. You know, what are you good at? Okay, you're going to do this then. And I, and I loved what you, what Mia Vela said, uh, Mestre said in your interview, that that's what Mestre Main did with her. Yeah. She was good at work. Yeah. So he used her for yeah. performances and shows, you know, and and that, that I've never met him, but that immediately makes me respect him yeah. immensely, you know. And obviously he's got quite a few mess mess with tempo, yeah. you know, He's got lots of you know, amazing stuff. I will follow his work. And so, you know, it's, it's much more impressive to see somebody who's creating a fertile platform. Exactly. For Easter's, you know. I, I like to, yes, I like to elevate, also unlock some, something in, uh, in a person uh, that they don't even know. Try to work with that. I have some students that are not that, some are not capable of, of remembering the lines. Uh, the Portuguese words is quite difficult. Okay, cool. But he puts not so much effort into it. But when he's played the Bilimbao, he's like like that, you know. There you go. He plays the hard sharp. But I say to him, doesn't matter. Like I said, just focus on you. Focus on your things. Work on it. Work on it, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Don't feel other pressure. You'll be fine. I know because I know you're struggling with sometimes with words. Um, but it's okay. Work on it as long as, as you at least try it. You're you're okay. Mm -hmm. You know you're okay. And that's why I also try to elevate it out of people. But also for me as well to step out of the comfort zone because I can tell people just yeah, step out of your comfort zone, unlock your hidden your hidden quality. But it starts with yourself as well. You know, and I think it's really important to as a teacher or as a human being sometimes you step out of your comfort zone and try to learn new stuff and try to fall and get up again and sometimes i try things out in the class it's, it's a great success sometimes it's not like okay maybe that's not the right time but try it out i'm figuring things out and it's i always start with my with, with, with myself i was testing for myself and then i test with the students as well okay let's try it out and also to bring so much energy and so much hidden stuff out of the people because I did it as well for me, you know, and then I wanted to share it so we can make it a whole. And, and it's okay to, to fall, it's okay to fail, it's okay to have self-doubt, but that's what's also what life is. And we, we must help each other instead of like, like doing this, yeah. competing and, and uh, give it a, the, 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 the side look for now, come on. Yeah. Man. We better than that. And helping is a really important. So that's that's another thing I, I've been trying to tell myself, right? Since the pandemic, when we couldn't travel even to see our parents for an hour from the yeah. house. And now, you know, I, I feel so privileged to be talking to you. I feel very privileged the opportunities we have. And obviously, I'm very privileged to travel with Capoeira, you know, be invited to events. And so what I say to people, because obviously, again, going back to, to the past, rather than me going okay i've been invited to an event what am i going to show them about me what am i going to talk about my work and how am i going to use this to promote my capoeira yeah 
which, which could be a mindset that some people go through. Oh, this is great for me. Or oh, this is going to help me be, you know, you know what I mean? All these sort yeah. of thoughts that we don't want that can happen. Um, and one of the things I said myself, whenever I get invited to do anything, and I forgot to send you this message actually, which was, okay, thank you so much for the privilege. Thanks for inviting me. Why have you invited me? And what can I do to help? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, because you never know why the person, you know, and it, it, and I find like we don't have enough dialogue. Like there's a real kind of uh, thing of just inviting people to events. They come mm -hmm. and then at the time of the event, they say, oh, go and teach a class. And it becomes yeah. very insular and like superficial. And sometimes I'm like, well, what, what do you need help with? Yeah. Like what's, you know, and sometimes they don't need help with anything. All right, cool. Well, that's good. Then I I'll just be here yeah. and, in, and, and be fun or whatever. But it's a really important question because sometimes you're there and you've prepared this amazing stuff for advanced students and they've got a whole bunch of beginners or you've yeah. got all this stuff prepared for adults and they've got a bunch of kids. kids. Or, yeah. or, or they've, they've seen you before and they really liked that you had a hard game and you've gone there to teach the beginning battle or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> really, and I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen so yeah. many times. And yet there's anything like you said, nobody wants to go and say, do you know what? that class wasn't for me, you know, I, I liked it. Thank you very much. But you know, nobody, we, we don't talk to each other. No, this is really true. Hard conversations. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, uh, yeah. What can I do to help? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's my question. Why, why, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's a really good question because I never thought about that. I never thought it's really good. I never thought, okay, I'm invited to an event, but why am I here? what why you know and that's a really good question and it's interesting to see the answers because it's different each time yeah sometimes they don't know they just say oh, i like you and they you know or ah, oh, it was really nice that we met in 2006 and you know yeah. i like your energy and so you know i just want to connect and have a chat which is yeah. our case here yeah but sometimes they'll be like look i really like this that you're doing and i can't do that that's why i want you to come here or, or i brought you because i wanted my students to see an english guy doing capoeira or oh, yeah, yeah. I, I love the moves you do or, or i like that song did and and and, and i find like once you, you you're okay to allow other people to take control as well that's yeah. the other thing you know give up you know so, my sponsor and he mentioned a lot about this in his talk now about surrender now you, exactly, you yeah. like the word yielding yeah yielding which is almost like negation, you know, neg achiever, it comes to like negating something, yeah. but it's more, it's not like a blocking, like I'm stopping something, it's more of a yield. Mm. I feel like that's what we should do is, you know, if we're going to play in the hard then I, I wouldn't just be kicking you. No. I'm waiting for you to tell me what you want me to do. Yeah. I often play like that. It took me a long time to take lead of games. I used to just love being kicked and being in the environment. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, um, so, so yeah, I feel like that's something that's also going to help us professionals and students too. Because sometimes if I ask for help from a student and say, look, I need help, maybe I don't need it, but I want to show vulnerability yeah. a little bit, they're going to do the same. Yeah. Whereas if I, if I try and be perfect and I don't, like I always try and make an idiot of myself in classes on purpose. And then I tell the students, they say, and I say, well, I want you to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I don't want you to take me seriously. But I don't want you to take yourself so it's it. True that. You know, it's be worse. the same approach. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, like I always mention about my hair, because like if I speak about <laughs> it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the thing, yeah, I, I've, uh, yeah, a little bit of self-spot as well, you know, just to make yourself a little bit like an idiot, you know. <laughs> Foolproof, because we in the in, in it's probably in the same in Holland. I make a generalization, but people are very shy mm -hmm. in English. Like shy okay, yeah, physicality, shy about moving, shy about singing. You know, it's quite reserved. Not everybody, but most people here don't drink. Uh, uh, sorry, don't dance unless they're drunk. You know, they, true. They <laughs> it's like it doesn't happen. So if you got a formal class for dance and they come in and say, "Yeah, we're gonna do this," or if you come in and it's like a martial arts, like, "Yeah, we're gonna kill each other." Yeah. You know, so yeah, the, the environment is going to be uncomfortable already, right? Yeah, yeah. We're going to make them feel uncomfortable. We're meant to do that. Yeah. But not straight away, right? They need to feel safe. They need mm -hmm. to feel, they need to, uh, you know, they need to be able to listen. People don't listen if you don't listen to them, you know, if you don't see, make them seen. And as teachers, we talk a lot. I talk too much. I probably talk too much on this, not letting no, you. No, I'm, I'm here to listen. <laughs> 
That's why I invited you. You talk, you talk, you love to talk. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's my help. Just talking. Yeah, for exactly. an hour. I'm not sure how helpful that is. <laughs> Yeah, so I think all the I like I, I, it's been great actually to, to talk through these things because they're things that we talk about a lot with students, and I think um, all these kind of like things can never be said enough. You no. know, you can always repeat these these things, but again, talking is nothing; actions are better. And so, obviously, what we have to try and do is 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 be those things, like yeah. be yourself. And yeah, Apple has helped me so much from a young kid to a less young kid. You know, it's it's, it's it helps. It's an exercise. It's a it's a mm -hmm. full personal exercise, and you have to make loads of mistakes. I've made a, a lot of people upset. I've done lots of stupid things. I've been over enthusiastic. I've been selfish. I've been childish. Every, you know, I, I'm not I don't I'm not try to admit those things because I started when I was 13, 14. You know, I wasn't fully fledged, and no. then wasn't scared of being an idiot. I think that. That's one of the things I've always been is over enthusiastic. But thankfully, because of that, it meant I had a lot of, you know, slaps on the face from things that I did and mm -hmm. learned, okay, that's not the right thing to do, you know. True. Yeah. You know, found some different ways of doing things. Um, and apologies to anybody that <laughs> <laughs> suffered my exercise. <laughs> well, well spoken, man. Well spoken. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Most I ask my uh, my guests a uh, little bit about their backstory, about their names. Uh, so, uh, what's in the name Mascochi? Um, how did you find Capoeira, or how did Capoeira find you? And did you were were you immediately in love, or was a little bit hesitant? So, what's your origin story? Oh, great! Thank you. So, my my name was given by you know Master Shikoch. Yeah. So he gave me the nickname because I started Capoeira with Papa Le, was in Nottingham, and it was uh, twice a week, three times a week in a local community center. I found out about like everybody of our generation from Eddie Gordo. Of course. You just, yeah, because we had, used to have an argument. I have three brothers, okay. right? So four boys, and we used to play Tekken. And we used to say, no, you can't pick Eddie. You have to <laughs> anyone else. <laughs> I had the same with my friends. <laughs> I have a friend come over and they were like, oh, let's play Tekken. They were like, one rule, you're not being Eddie because you're Eddie in real life. Don't play Eddie. <laughs> so come on, man. But also on that game, he was the he was the button basher's dream because he just kept pressing circle and he not only destroyed the part, the other person, he did it coolly as well. So, yeah. So you can imagine anybody telling you you can do that when you were kids. That's it. You're hooked. Yeah. Um, but I remember my first class very vividly because I've done other martial arts. Kids do karate classes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. we, we went to the first class and I remember the very first class Papa Lego said to the group, oh, there was a girl at the front and the girl said, he said, oh, since such and such had been complaining, we never teach the frontal kicks. We're only doing spinning kicks. Today we're going to do a class of just frontal kicks. Yeah. And it was Benso and Matelo and sharper, mm -hmm. and very much was like, oh, okay, okay. And it was nothing like Tekken whatsoever, just kicks. No. And I was like, okay, cool, you know, it's just another martial art. And then yeah. they did a Honda, and Papa Legs did an Audi Costa, a somersault, a, a, a beja floor into wow. a hand spin. And I was like, you didn't teach us anything. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that? Where was that? Yeah. You, know, you didn't show us any of those. Exactly. And, and I still get students who say that to me and I remember back saying oh I can't you know I have to admit I was exactly the same you know? <laughs> where's the cool stuff why yeah, where, that? Oh, you know? yeah and so I was very enthusiastic I was at 13 14 I looked probably younger like 10 or 11 but there was no kids classes it was mm. an environment and I was the only kid in the class I went with my older brother who was a couple of years older so he must have been 16 17 but he he's the opposite of me he looked he was the sort of kid in school when he was 11, he looked 18. So he was oh, the wow. kid in school. <laughs> but I, you know, I'm still not cool. And, 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 you know, I still, I still look, uh, you know, I, I, I looked younger than I was at that age. Everyone wants to look older at that age, right? Um, and basically, Mesha Koch came for the first event because he's uh, Papa Legos' teacher. Yeah. So oh, Papa, that, that I didn't yeah, know. Huh? They're okay. both from the same in, in Brazil, Pats Jiminas. And so he, he was the, he was brought as in like, we're going to have an event. Yeah. Uh, I think Papa must have been like a, a third belt at the time. 
it was a different color system. He was a blue belt, okay. but it was federation, so it was a third belt. Because I remember in the first batters out that he took a green and blue, which is like fourth belt. Yeah. And after that was a long time. He was on a blue and yellow belt, uh, maybe three, four years. Okay. Uh, and so Mesh Chikoc, who was Professor Chikoc at the time, yeah, he came and he was, you know, almost Eddie Gore, like dreadlocks. Dreadlocks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's, you know, if you've met Mesh Chikoc, he's, yes. he's called Whip for a reason. Yep. He's got you know, a harsh sense of humor. But basically, he saw me, super enthusiastic at the front of every class, and literally, like, teacher's pet running around, chasing after Papa Leg was at all costs, like a mascot. So he was like, is, he's like, is that your mascot? He doesn't leave you alone. He's always fine. <laughs> like there was even a case like when they had the first event or maybe the second event, they had Mest Deputado and Mesti Onsa Negra, Mesti Bimba Son, maybe it was Jorgin, some other people. And they had like, after the event, they went to somebody's house and everybody was in the kitchen talking in English. And there was literally just Papa Shikoc and a few teachers speaking Portuguese at the front. Yeah, I'm the only one sat there like playing attention tennis, not understanding anything except no. he's angry and he's <laughs> upset, and you know, <laughs> a joke, but nobody's laughing. <laughs> so I think, I think I just hung around a lot. I was just, I was just happy to be in an adult environment, yeah. like being accepted in an adult environment. And so I think that's for me why I think they called me my cool. It then became something about you know uh, for me I then kind of saw it as like I want, because then if you you're the kid at the group they all want you to be the best mm -hmm. they all like encourage you oh you the mascot you meant to represent so there's a little bit of healthy pressure as I grew up in Capoeira and I was I kind of took it on board it's like okay I really want to do this because you you get lots of the adults going oh God I wish I was your age. And, I was, and so as a kid, you feel like, oh man, I really should carry on with this because there's a lot of yeah. these, they want to be me and yeah. I'm nobody, you know what I mean? So I think that, that's, that kind of sums it up, why, why I was called my squatch. Um, yeah. Cool, man. Cool. <laughs> nice story. <laughs> really nice story. And um, so Papa Lex is still your teacher? No, unfortunately, okay. unfortunately not yet. We, could, we need another hour to talk about that, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm very grateful. I spent 15 years of my life, seven days a week with him. He was in the UK till about 2008. And okay. then he grew Cyprus, in, uh, sorry, for Crete. Oh, in yeah. Then he moved back to Brazil, mm -hmm. but then he used to come back every year. I think, I'm not sure where he is now because we're a bit out of touch, but I know he was in the UK again. Then he went back to Brazil. Oh yeah. But he, from when he was in the UK from 2000, 2008. I mean, he lived in my house for two years. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, before that, we were very close. Yeah. Everybody who knows me and him know that we were inseparable for 15 years. Okay. But not anymore. And, you know, that's a shame. Um, but that's, that's how things happen. You know, I'm very grateful, yeah. very grateful for everything. And, you know, th we, as I mentioned before, this kind of ideal setting of like, teacher and student and you know having that person forever you know it's it's breaking off sadly yeah you know but it's it's healthy because sometimes that's a forced situation for both people you know um, that's and as well you just started a class with somebody and it was the only person who was teaching that thing the thing yeah. you, you know and then things things change you know people change yeah your situations change uh, yeah. Who, so. who, who considered you uh, to be a teacher now? Who's your teacher? So, so I took all of my belts uh, in Nottingham up to yeah. instructor. I took my instructor's belt in 2019, 2009, sorry. Yeah. Instructor's belt. And then, uh, and that was one year after, so basically Papa left in 2008. And then a year later he came back and he graduated a, a bunch of us to teach classes here because he wasn't here exactly. anymore, right? Yeah. And then we carried on. So I've been teaching in my city for about 15 years now. Uh, in 2014, we all graduated as professores in Capoeirando, Meso Suna's event in mm -hmm. Els. So it was 2014. And if I'm correct, and somebody can correct me if I'm not, I think it was the only time they did a, gringo format oh, really? really? yeah the year before my wife joyce took her professor's belt in the first and i think only uh formatura feminina 
Oh. And then next year we were all, you know, doing our graduation and it was the first kind of like group of estrangeros graduating. Yeah. So I took up to Professor then in 2014. Yeah. But the Contra Mess belt, which I'm now for the rest of the moment, it was Mess Osuna gave me in the 50 year event in Sao Paulo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. Um, so that's, that's the current situation. And obviously at the moment, you know, post pandemic, the distance and everything that's going on. I mean, me and Joyce, uh, you know, are very well connected with lots and lots and lots of different people. But obviously it's been three years since I've been able to go to Brazil and we, you know, we're running our group here. Mm. So it's hard to, it's hard. It would be, it would be uh, hypocritical to suddenly affiliate. I don't like the word affiliation anyway, because it's a weird one, mm -hmm. but to affiliate to somebody, yeah. you know, I have my history of people you know who i i consider and still consider but i i don't i don't have one person you know i don't have one person which is the ideal you know thing that most people see and if there was that choice it's not a, you know i would have True. that too yeah um, it's not always the case and there's many people who don't do capo who don't get to a certain point because there's a there's a a dogma that if you don't have one person mm, I yeah, oh, one. Yeah. And I, I said, we have two people yeah. here, me and my wife. Yeah. But, you know, I wouldn't say to all my students, who's your teacher? Is it me or her? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because it's, it's probably be her, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing. Like, I think it's different. Like, I understand the respect for people above you, but most of the people who are mastery, they had somebody they learned with. But if you ask them their history, there's a list of teachers they yes have. yeah um and they respect all of them and they have connection with them and they bring them and they have commute you know and so there's many different people in your capoeira life um it's not and obviously you're very lucky if you have one who's there with you the whole time mm -hmm. right? uh, agreed agreed i mean if we think, think of them as parents yeah not everybody has parents not everybody no, no. Has parents and it would be stupid for us to discriminate or to say well if you don't have a parent you're lost well it's like well no very much but <laughs> there are other possibilities right so i'm very lucky i had 15 years of, of guidance and i had 15 years with with one person mm -hmm. uh, through that person and the group and many other people that i met you know including yourself you know i i am who i am today yeah but it's been a, a lot has happened since then which i'm very grateful for too so nice nice story because i was wondering i was also always wondering Okay, so who was who was my Scotch teacher, really? Yeah. Because I know uh, Chicochi, uh, I know Piolio. Piolio yeah. is a uh, student of Chicochi. Yeah, yeah. I never knew that Papa Legos, that you started Papa Legos. I never knew that. Yeah, so Papa Legos, Parench, Piolio. Yeah. There was a, three or four boys with Piolio. Uh, Chis, Chisil, Gino, uh, Braza. Pioli can help me if he's here. He's not here, but he can tell you, <laughs> you him, and you should interview him. He, I will. I will send him a speech as well. You should ask him, and he'll be able. My image of Pioli, we're best friends. You know, we, we, he lives very close to us. His kids, yeah. you know, know yeah. me, Joyce and stuff. So, we, I'm going to see him in two weeks. He's got his event, and he's coming. Oh, nice! And his wife, and and, and everything. It's, she's amazing. Um, but I remember our first trip to Brazil. We went to Pats Jiminas and we rented a bus. Shikoch, Papale was me, Piolo and like four other people and a bunch of English people. And we picked up Piolo and the guys drove all the way from Patos to Goiânia, which is like 15, 20 hours. Exactly. Pick, picked up Mestre Onsa, who's Mestre Bimba. So yeah. drove another 15, 20 hours up to Natal, Damn. which is top of Brazil. And that's where Piolo and the guys saw the beach for the first time. Wow. You know? And so that trip for me was like, that, so that was my first trip to Brazil. And the year after I lived in Brazil for a year. So I lived with Mesosuna from his house. He was sending me to other places to train. And I just, the like pivotal year of my life mm -hmm. where I met Joyce, but we were friends back then. I actually met Joyce's brother because I was like 17 when I went and she must have been about like 15. So it was just, you know, we were both yeah. kids. But then obviously we, kept the friendship for many yeah. years and it wasn't until later on that you know the friendship changed but yeah that year that i lived in brazil was when i learned portuguese met loads of 
different people, friends I still have to this day, like Espirinho, Modas, Ivan, Kibi, Mes Boca Rica. I mean, new ones who are still in contact with. Um, and so that first trip was like amazing, amazing. And Fjord is a big part of that. Nice, nice to hear. Nice to hear. I will, I will ask him yeah. for, uh, yeah, man. for an interview because, like, because I do this with people that I, I met before um, in my Capoeira career, but also I'm also doing this for, for, for you know, people that I never met before, just know them through social media. And, uh, but I like to um, have this, this conversation uh, because we have our, we have our, our history. Um, I don't, I don't want to be, uh, I, I don't remember you fondly. <laughs> That's because but the thing is, 2006, the things with 2006, that I will remember fondly because there was a time of 2006 to seven where all those guys came to one place. Suasuna, Lobão, uh, Papalegos, Xuxo, Poncho Nio, Zé Antonio, oh. Piolho, Yerastinha, yeah. yeah, Espanhano. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> there was there was all the all stars were, were there, and I, I was really intimidated because you know you think you're good in your own town, you think you you're you're all there until you see those kind of <laughs> dudes, you know. You are good. I remember. I told you that at the beginning days, like you inspired me because you went in there to the lions, <laughs> <laughs> and, you came, and you came out with so much respect, like. At least for me, I don't care about anyone else. But I so much, Thank and you. that was amazing for me to see. You know, it really was. I was probably in the background. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because for me, that 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 was a pivotal moment for me in my career. Career, see all those guys together that I um, heard of. Uh, I've seen a little bit of them. I, I knew a few. I, I knew them beforehand, and Poch, I met Pochier before, but. Uh, not the big guns, you know, and they were all there, all the all-stars. I remember the first night they were there and um, I was I was sitting there on the bench and the, the horse was forming and San, San Antonio walks in, followed by his son, Poncho Neo. I was like sitting there like this, you know, <laughs> and my girlfriend at the time was like, you okay? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, this is, this is, you see those guys, this is the real deal. <laughs> those are the real deal. And, and I remember my first game that night was, was with uh, Poncho Neo. And he, he also, <laughs> he also remembered the game. He was, I was like, shit, man, I have to, <laughs> I want to play with Poncho Neo because I was really such a fan of, of his. And now he's standing there. Okay, let's have a game with him. And our energy was so connecting. And it was play, we were playing, 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 and the audience was were going bananas. But I was so in my zone, and I was, I don't know what I was doing. I was just trying to escape because he was freaking fire fast. I tried to jump over him and, and, and like that. And then he caught me with one kick, and it's my squad, damn. He, he threw a Habja higher, this close, like here. Boom! And everyone was like, what i was like fuck what this <laughs> was like, shit if i was a couple of inches like this it was my head man it was my head and after i was like man it was such a such a, such a was... grateful game you know it was so that event was it was really an event that really sh 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 stuck with me and struck with mm -hmm. me because i was such an awe of all those talents and I think a year later, the half of them, uh, half of all the all those guys were back again. And I remember, I was at the time, yeah, me, I was a little bit, I yes, I was in awe, but also a little bit self doubted as well because I was so intimidated by their way of playing. And I was thinking, man, maybe I should, maybe I should join Cordal Giordo because I really <laughs> wanted, yeah, I really wanted this to have those experience you know and i remember i forgot i forgot to uh, tell uh Pochnil about this conversation but i will tell him with, in, in in person 
I was sitting in a cafeteria and uh, there was uh, intermission, was a, was a break. I was, I was really feeling down because in my mind, I'm never as good as those kind of guys, you know, and I have my group, you know, there, my own group, but I want to achieve that. And so I was really down. I was sitting there uh, at the table and Ponchinio and Espio were there having coffee. And Ponchinio, he looked at me and it was like, Spirito, you okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, come, 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 you know. And but at the time, I was learning to, to speak Portuguese. So I wanted to express myself uh, because he was like, what's, what's up? And I told him, I told him everything. I told Espiru everything uh, and Portuguese translated for me. I was like, I'm such an, I'm such intimidated by all, all of your games. Uh, I, I wanted to achieve that, how you guys play and the, the energy. And uh, I was really doubting myself at the moment. And uh, he, he no, he, he translated to a spiel and the spiel said to me, Spiritu, what you what you're doing as a non Brazilian is really respectful because you're going along with, with the currents. You're going along with Capoeira. What Capoeira is not about Brazilians, not about one style, it's about what are you capable of uh, to offer for Capoeira and what you're doing now and, and you know, we've met each other and every time where I go when when I'm in the Netherlands I bump into you. You you you're always there. So and you're contributing. You're helping our culture, our community to stay alive. So that is the most important. And then it was like, oh damn, that's cool. That, that, those kind of words always was always stuck with me. And then after that conversation, uh, we had that that famous, infamous short game, Ness Spiel and and me in, in the big Horda. And he was like, let's just let's let it out, let it out. And then we play, play, play. And the other whole was bananas. And that that event was for me really important, you know. And um and sometimes I, I, I share the story with my students when one of my students when they're feeling down or self-doubt said, Oh, hold back. I was kind of I can't I can't explain how I felt at that moment. And it was really an eye-opener, you know, and I'm really happy that I Still, still in the Capoeira world, and to uh, and, and offer my thing, my energy, my talent uh, in the Brazilian, in the heavy Brazilian culture, you know. So, yeah. So, so that's why I think I'm not remembering you because I was really into my own head and I mean, try to build up, build my name and and to prove myself as a non-Brazilian. Look what I can do. Look what I. But also really scared to be judged or. To, to I don't know this was that event was really important to me man well in one anecdote you've summarized everything we talked about right you know yeah. all this positivity from an intense intense situation which you know I think it's really important to look back positively because there's no point in picking out like what what happened or whatever but we were there in that time and we knew that there was a real sense of uh, of excitement amongst yeah. everybody capoeira at that time you know everybody was excited about capoeira in europe mm -hmm. and it was super positive and yeah group called angioro was just starting to invade everywhere like yes that's, exactly and it's it's important like 20, 20 years i've seen the culture of capoeira in europe change yeah. and called angioro has obviously been the main the experience for me and it's interesting how without these anecdotes and these sorts of things, people who haven't lived any of that, people who haven't had those experiences, won't, won't understand the, the complicated mix of emotions that you went through, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important for me to hear that because when you invited me and then I checked and I was like, Professor Espiritu? I was like, wasn't he Professor in 2000? <laughs> <laughs> then I looked and I think, am I correct in saying you're going for your controversy belt in in yeah thank yeah. good Woo, that's it <laughs> but you're not the only one you're not yeah. the only one <laughs> but, but that's so inspirational because you know everything that you said i didn't get either like because i only saw you in the heart then and obviously you didn't see me because we just mentioned all the other people there yeah. but with that massive event this never happened like we never talked to each other no no and what's really weird is how the same amazing intense environment also causes massive gap between the people yeah. that are in there yeah it's a really hard 
balance between creating this amazing enthusiasm about, wow, look how big Capo and powerful Capoeira can be. But then like a big, massive fire, it also makes people stand away from it and not get involved. Exactly. And it's much and they get burned. And yeah. so let's have that. And for me to hear you say that just reminds me that like, what I saw you do was see that massive fire and jump over it, <laughs> jump over it. Like a branch up, run around. <laughs> I was like, that's, I respect that guy. And do you know what was the most beautiful thing? I said this at the beginning, I'll say it again, is that you taught me in that, let that event that anything else, the, the top trump is your heart. If you've got your heart in the right place, all these amazing, and at that time we had a lot of posturing going on, a lot of hierarchical posturing yeah. and yeah. who's on what it's level. Yeah. Benin was coming up the ranks because he just take Messi's belt exactly. had a lot to prove and other people pushing him down. There's a big like pressure going yeah. on. And you just went in the middle and say, forget all that. We're <laughs> supposed to be playing. Here's how you play. And it was like yeah. a big reality and the reaction of Messi's fear of Ponsini or of Boneco, you know, and I think there's so many people like that in Capoeira that they just don't get involved in stuff in, in the same way. And the anxieties and whatever, you know, they, they, they have them and like you did, you just went there and did yourself and you changed the energy of what was going on. And so that's such an inspirational anecdote. And that's why I remember you, you know, honestly. Cool. Thanks. So, Thanks, and that's why I remember about you. And so when you invited me, I even said, do, do you mind? I don't... Are we back? Yeah, we're back. We're back. So, <laughs> I think Tatanka keeps buying the game. He, he, wants, <laughs> he, wants, he wants to end this. He's <laughs> <laughs> No, what I was saying, uh, I was like, uh, yeah, it, it's it's really a privilege. It was really, really fun to uh, share our stories, share our perspectives. And uh, it's really nice to have this interaction. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it, I'm feeling with this filter energy. And right now, I, I really want to play up with you right now. You know? <laughs> Me too, man. <laughs> well, really cool, man. I, I need to warm up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> me too, man. <laughs> I'm not 20 anymore. I'm not 20 anymore. <laughs> but I really uh, want to um, to go to London sometime uh, to visit you, to visit Poncho Neo. Um, and it would, be, it would be cool, it would be an honor to uh, to ask you to come here sometime for absolutely, events, you know? Absolutely. It would be a, a big privilege. We, we live two hours from London, so if you visit my Poncho Neo, it's a two-hour train journey to okay. our studio. Uh, you can stay in our house. It's be an absolute privilege because we have our own space. Cool. You know, let us know. We can organize a workshop and nice. do some nice here. But, but no, that would be really cool. And what, what, what one other thing I was going to say was I went to Brazil first time in 2004 and a yeah. friend and lived, sorry, 2003, but then I lived there 2004, 2005. And the friends that I met then probably still was on Facebook or we hardly use Skype. I didn't see some of them for like 10, 15 years. And I consider you a friend now. So, you cool, know, man. Thank you, man. Likewise. 15 years. What's amazing for me is you're, you're, you're still the same person. Like, you haven't aged, by the way. <laughs> but, you're, you're, you know, it's, I'm really, it's, this is the most uh, amazing thing about Capoeira. We met each other such a long time ago, yeah. such a short period of time in a sports hall. And then we're reconnecting, like you said. And I think that's the thing that keeps me in Capoeira all these years is because you never know where a seed that you planted with somebody else a long time ago will come to fruition and allow yeah. something amazing. Yeah. So I'm really privileged to. So thank you, man. I really appreciate it a lot. Likewise, man. Likewise. Let's stay in touch. Yeah, of course. Let's stay in touch. We'll. And uh, let's exchange some, uh, some knowledge. Let's exchange some movements uh, where we see each other in real life. Yeah, man. And uh, next, so, time, next, next time we'll do a training live, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you, I watch your videos and you do some amazing moves, man. Oh, thank really. You. Thanks, man. Really, really nice. Sometimes I'm, I'm watching like, how the fuck does he do that, man? And you, cannot, you, cannot, you cannot pause it. You cannot pause it on Instagram. It's like, fuck, it's okay. Watch it again. Oh, whatever. Yeah. I just got I just gotta to talk to him. <laughs> you, you know where it's all from. It's all just a collage of stuff I've stolen from other people. <laughs> yeah, but you made you made it your own. But it's cool, man. It's cool. <laughs> just keep doing what you're doing, and uh, you. yeah. And uh, again, I really thank you for uh, for having uh, for doing this, and uh, keeps me keeps me fuel running. And uh, 
we can stay in touch, man. Yeah, of course. Can't wait for the next one. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. See you. Uh, Cheers. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.